It is now my distinct honor and privilege to introduce our first speaker of the symposium. Dr. Einat Wilf is a member of Knesset within the Independence Faction and serves on the Influential Foreign Affairs and Defense Committee. Previously, she served as a senior fellow with the Jewish People Policy Planning Institute, a foreign policy advisor to Vice Premier Shimon Peres, and a strategic consultant with McKinsey and Company in New York. She is also the author of two books, My Israel, Our Generation, and Back to the Basics, How to Save Israeli Education at No Additional Cost. She holds a bachelor's degree in government and fine arts from Harvard University, an MBA from INSEAD in France, and a PhD in political science from the University of Cambridge. Not only is Einat a brilliant politician, but she is also a personal mentor and inspiration, and someone who I've had the privilege of working with these past few months. Uh, we are extremely honored to have Dr. Inad Wilf speak to us today. It is my honor to welcome you. Normally, uh, I have interns who approach me, and this is one case where I went out and approached someone to be my intern. I was in Los Angeles to have meetings with the Jewish community, and I attended, I think it was the Memorial Day uh, ceremony, and Yoav gave a speech over there. And typically, I must say, many of the speeches on these days are very cliched. And it was the first time that I heard a remarkable, brilliant speech uh, that pr came from the Israeli perspective that I not only was I not ashamed of, I, I was truly proud of uh, that uh, you presented uh, Israel and in such a manner. And I immediately approached uh, his father and you in order that when you are in Israel, you should intern with me. And uh, it's a true honor and privilege that you've been willing to, so thank you. Uh, I wanted to uh, introduce uh, a little bit uh, some thinking on the issue of uh, the delegitimacy of Israel, how we should think about it as uh, you go back to the campuses. I think a little bit, we just have to think first in terms of the historical uh, perspective. The efforts to undermine Israel are far from new. And if you think about it, they've gone through transformations throughout history. If we look at the history of Israel, for the first uh, nearly 30 years, the story was one of trying to undermine Israel physically by the force of armies. And those were the years from 48 to 73 where Israel fought wars, your classic wars, tanks, airplanes. And ultimately, Israel was able to emerge triumphant from that phase. And there has not been a classic military war to undermine Israel ever since. Israel did so by means of building one of the world's mightiest military machines. And ultimately also being able to convert some of that power into at least one peace agreement. But this did not end the process of trying to undermine Israel. This has moved then from the military arena of armies to two big arenas. One was economic and another uh, the one of international terrorism, beginning with the Arab boycott in the 70s, and also this is the era where international terrorism really begins to play a major role. There are new efforts to undermine Israel, to isolate it economically, to weaken it economically, and to weaken it by uh, force of terrorism and its population. Ultimately, Israel is also able to emerge triumphant from these two challenges by building a strong export-based economy that has nothing to do with the region, that does not depend on it, and also by finding a way to almost beat international terrorism and even domestic, not that there are not efforts anymore, but the Israeli population is no longer terrorized. And terrorism is truly something of the mind not just a physical attack. And again, this has not marked the end. The fact that Israel, again, has been able to emerge triumphant from these challenges did not mark the end. And what we have seen is a mutation of the efforts to undermine Israel into two arenas. One, of unconventional warfare, especially as we talk about the development of the uh, nuclear program in Iran. And the second is what we're talking here today, it's the intellectual arena. The effort to delegitimize, undermine Israel in various arenas where they are international, uh, campuses, media, legal battles. 
Now, the question is, many of you might say, why does it even matter if Israel is intellectually attacked? Uh, supposedly, I mean, we should just be pleased that we have moved from an era of armies and uh, terrorism to one where Israel is merely intellectually attacked. But I actually think that the intellectual danger to Israel is no less important than the physical danger because of the very unique nature of Israel as an idea. Israel was an idea long before it was a country. It is this idea that has made people come here and want to build their life here. It was this idea that got Avi to come here. And the idea of Israel it's, is in the foundation of its being. If this idea, like you defined it, that the Jewish people as a people have the right to their own homeland in the only country in which they were ever sovereign, if this idea is undermined, then something very fundamental about the strength of Israel begins to be undermined. And what we see today is that every part of this idea is on the attack. We see the part that the Jewish people are a people. I've seen that being attacked. I often hear the Jewish people are not a people. You're a religion. Religions don't get states. End of story. The whole idea of Zionism, that the Jewish people are a people, a nation, have the right to self-determination, that is being attacked. And the relationship to the land of Israel, that Israel, that this is the, the only place where the Jewish people are sovereign, that's being attacked as well. So what I find that we need to do today is go back to the basics of defending that very foundational idea long before we enter into specific policies. And the reason is that also that the cause of peace will not be served by undermining the idea of Israel, not by isolating it, not by making it feel delegitimized and insecure. So whoever cares for the cause of peace should also care very much for defending that foundational idea separate from various criticisms of policies. So I don't want to go too long for what we need to do, and I think that would be much of the discussion about what needs to be done, but I will just say a few uh, basic ideas. First of all, I think it's important for us to understand that this is really a challenge and that we're in a battle and a struggle here and that each one of you going back to campuses is part of it. Um, I call it, I sometimes say that just as we have the Israeli Defense Forces, we should now seek to establish the Israeli Intellectual Defense Forces, kind of devoted to the intellectual defense of Israel. And I think that in a way, if you don't mind me uh, kind of drafting you into the IIDF, uh, <laughs> I view the, uh, this effort as, as part of it. Um, we need to be much more outspoken and outgoing about our cause rather than always defending. I find that we always defend rather than uh, kind of go on the attack or at least uh, take the initiative in terms of where we want to go. And I think the key goal should be not to have people be pro-Israel or pro-Palestinian, but to have, just as you mentioned, is what you all succeeded to do, as, uh, what Avi succeeded to do, is to create an appreciation for the complexity of the region. And what I often say, the goal when I try to speak to various groups, is not to get them to be on our side. I want to get them to have an appreciation for the complexity. If I've achieved that, in my view, this is the goal. If people can at least, before judging, understand how complex the story is, I think we'll be able to achieve much rather than trying to turn it into a situation where they're either on our side or the other side, but have them just stop and think before they judge. So I think ultimately, just as Israel has come out triumphant from the other challenges it faced, um, I think Israel will ultimately emerge triumphant from this as well. This could be in many ways the beginning of an amazing renaissance, just as the beginning of the Arab boycott, we thought this was going to kill Israel, and today we have one of the world's most innovative, interesting, powerful economies. I think this too could be the beginning of a journey that ultimately we will not only emerge triumphant, but will be the beginning of the renaissance of 
the Zionist idea where more and more people will go back to remembering the story of what made Israel to begin with and certainly what made it great. So thank you very much and you're doing amazing work and good luck to you and it's a real honor and privilege to contribute in whatever way I can. Thank you.